So, okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome to uh, the, this uh, Q&A session for uh, the second Generative AI Challenge that eFabless is conducting as a part of our uh, movement to uh, generate more uh, um, designs that are actually uh, using the generative AI approach, uh, whether it's chat GPT or other AI assistant engines. And um, I wanted to uh, to to, uh, to just give you a, you know just I'm gonna flash out the the page and say that here is the if those who haven't seen it already or maybe didn't uh, see it, this is the second uh, um, AI generated open source uh, design challenge. Our objective here is that to use design uh, AI generated or, or call it prompt engineering to generate designs that are manufacturable. The winners of these uh, uh, the uh, of this competition, similar to the last one, uh, are awarded by having free manufacturing with uh, through eFabless platform. Uh, the uh, the the main aspect of, of the, the 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 work is going to be the how uh, the the prompt engineering aspect. So, what's going to happen here is that you will be able to uh, uh, use the AI. Uh, engines or assistants to generate an uh, RTL that can, uses the uh, the flow open lane to generate uh, the GDS that fits into our Caravel. So the process here is uh, we have a chip that's already pre-built and the effort use it for any participants in the challenge will uh, generate the design uh, that is going to be integrated into the harness or the chip and then they they will get aboard uh, as a part of that uh, fabrication process or, or a reward. And that board, uh, you can test and validate your design as it is. Now, the uh, the competition uh, has, uh, did, the deadline is September 7th. And uh, the judgment criteria here, um, are, uh, are, they're written in a few bullets, uh, but it's uh, important to highlight that every one of them is important. And the one thing that I would say uh, for everyone here is that think about someone else looking at your design and being able to use it without talking to you and actually learn from it. So if you put yourself in a, you know, from a fresh perspective, looking at your own design, uh, is there enough information that someone else can learn and actually reproduce your work? This is one of the major, major uh, judgment criteria that we have as a part of you know, here it's divided into the, the project documentation, the prompt documentation, the code, but it is, the, the summary is, can, I, can someone else use it? And without talking to you, this actually is a very good for you as well, because it allows your design to be, you know, in, in, used by the community. I was going to say popular, but popularity here really to be someone is using it and learning from it and re, re, uh, modifying it to do something else. So, uh, as a reminder, this there was an, 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 uh, a challenge, the first challenge that we conducted earlier this year, and we, we had three winners, and these winners have been announced, and they have been um, uh, their designs are actually on in the fabrication right now. So uh, I would encourage you to look at these designs, and because they already have been uh, you know delivered, it is important to. Uh, take a look at the repositories, think, think about the winners, look at the, their repository, how they document their information. Uh, someone was asking me yesterday about, should we include the, uh, the chat, um, uh, the chats like uh, in, a, in a live way, something like this, uh, where the, 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 there is a user writing something and, or should we do it in links? So I mentioned that links are not useful because it, they're going to be subject to the you know, ability of someone else would uh, use it so this is an example so i would encourage you to go and see what that example is and how uh, the winner uh, worked on it and uh, use it as some sort of a guide for the quality of submission uh, let alone the uh, the design itself so if i go back to the uh, uh, to the page where i was on here and um, so the the Git repositories were added earlier there. The, these were kind of harder to see. So for those who tried to access it and they didn't, so you will find it there. 
uh, one important piece of uh, uh, info uh, or kind of a content that can be actually very helpful is to uh, recommend actually absolutely re listen to that video and and see how Hammond Dr. Hammond Pierce actually explains what he did he uh, in the design that's one one of the uh, good guidances here so uh, one interesting thing that came out so um, la uh, la uh, la in July at DEC and this is just just published and we'll put this in the um, uh, 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 the links that, that after that there is a, a presentation by a Microsoft uh, in, engineer is his name is Eric Berg about how to use chat GPT and generative AI for verification uh, I'm not saying this is not intended to be uh, to change the direction it's just a useful uh, data point for someone who is using the the uh, generative AI to do another aspect of the design he, his focus is on the uh, the verification uh, space. So it, it would be very informative to actually take a look at this. And then again, we'll, uh, we'll put these links uh, uh, as we start questions. I'll put them all in the, uh, in the uh, chat window for access by the, everybody else. Uh, and then there's also this link to the video that um, Andy uh, writes, from, sorry, Andy. Uh, uh, was created for the the how to use uh, ChatGPT to generate uh, a design. It's about uh, three minutes long. Uh, if you haven't seen it, or uh, we will include that as well. It's a great example to kickstart some um, uh, something new. One thing I will say is that uh, this is not a, a prohibitive task. It is a very uh, interesting for those who are um, trying to to learn something new. Uh, I think contributions to the community and enabling others to learn from you is going to be uh, uh, amazing and uh, something that is people generally don't assume it is happening. So generative AI in general, there is a perception that it's not um, capable of assisting in design we believe it's very simple it's a productivity engine that super multiplies the productivity of the designer to get their own uh to meet their own goals whatever they are and this is an interesting way of, uh, of doing that and i'll pause here and uh, open the floor for questions and uh, there is a quick q a button on the uh on under the zoom window that would be uh, uh the, the place where you type questions asynchronously anytime, just write it here, or feel free to uh, ask uh, live. Left there is absolutely good to see you again, and I'll get Mohammed to put the links up live uh, as we're as we're going along here. I, I had a couple of the questions or points to address uh, that Mohammed kind of teased on, and the the first one was re regarding Eric Berg's presentation from Microsoft. And interestingly, Eric did all of his work with GPT-4 without any modification. So he was doing all of his work through prompt engineering directly on GPT-4. He didn't build a chip GPT or a chip chat or a GPT engineer. He just directly did prompt engineering on, on GPT-4 using the API. And, and he was designing and verifying quite large complex chips. So if you watch that video, you'll get a perception of where they are. And, they thought, based on the uh, commentary, that uh, Hammond and uh, Jinji Wang, who were the number one and two positions in our competition last time around, were only a few months behind them in terms of development of uh, RTL development on AI, um, and they were uh, they thought they were ahead in verification versus what anybody else was doing. Uh, but they're very actively interested with it, with what we're doing and what what the competition is bringing to market and what we've been able to do. And um, for any of you who haven't seen the top two submissions, both of them developed their own engine that sits on top of an AI. And Hammond, in his case, developed a tuned AI with an engine on top of it. And Jinji Wang developed an engine that sat on top of a public version of an AI. Uh, and then there's a third approach that we've seen, which was to try to use a GPT engineer, uh, which is about eight weeks old, I think now, um, on top of GPT-4. And the fourth approach we've seen, I think it was one of the contributors last time around in our competition, uh, I think it was Leviathan used auto GPT. Um, 
which is basically an iterative methodology stacked on top of a chat GPT 3.5, if I recall correctly, the last time around. So there are many, many different approaches to solving this problem. If you look at my video, which is only, as Mohammed said, three minutes long, um, I used chat GPT directly at the uh, text prompt and was able to generate a reasonably complex Verilog block with only a very small number of prompts and modifications. So if you're, if you're looking to do a simple design and then go through the verification process and provide that as an entry to the, the competition, that bar is achievable without any complex work on, on, of an engine on top of GPT. If you're looking to uh, provide a winning uh, uh, proposal going through the whole process and getting as far as uh, manufacturing, you're probably going to do, uh, need to do a little bit more work based on where the competition stands now, okay? Nelson, um, <laughs> I, we had this question internally literally today. Um, Nelson, there are multiple uh, papers being published. I use uh, ARVIX, but there are multiple papers being published uh, live as we speak the last few months on using AI for analog circuit design, using analog circuit design compilers. Um, so there, there are multiple people working in that field currently also. I don't know if that completely answers your question. So Andrea, there is uh, just a question. So I shared the links, but it turned out that from my vantage point, I only see the panelists and the hosts. I, I can't share them probably for the rest. So if you if, if you could, or I can just share them in the Q&A some. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I sent it to everyone, so. Great, yeah. okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so what do people feel that they would most benefit from seeing or getting help with to get started? Um, are people mm -hmm. uncomfortable or unfamiliar with uh, chat GPT in general or GPT-4? Uh, or are they uncomfortable with how to access the API, or they're uh, uncomfortable with how to take Verilog or verified Verilog implemented through GPT or GPT-4 um, or some other AI interface and move that into the Caravel development environment? What would they most like for us to uh, cover and provide information on either during this call or subsequent calls? Very quiet this time around. Yes, there is That's our modifications to the LLM. William. Yep. Yep. Um, our modifications to the L our modifications to an, an an LLM additional tooling for, or additional tooling or criterion for uh, a criterion for judging. Uh, is it possible no. To no. The answer is no. Yes. Yeah, so the, the concrete answer is no, William. Uh, we, we do not expect you to create a, a new AI tool as part of the solution. I would say that the people who've built the best solutions, so the most complex designs using AI tools today, have done it with a, a tool. But that's not to say that with a little bit more direct labor or direct interaction with the tool manually, you might not be able to build a much better design. Bear in mind that those uh, uh, top two or three designs that were submitted last time, two of them were done uh, with a tool built on top of the AI. The third one was done directly with manual mm -hmm. interaction with the tool uh, using the text prompt uh, uh, on the website, not even with the API. Okay, so there, there's, there's no criteria at all for you to create something new as part of the submission for the competition. The goal is to be able to bring the state of the art for, for how this is, uh, uh, you know, the awareness of how to follow this process to all of the members of the community as quickly as possible and help us learn from each other how to use these tools most effectively. So I have a question. If you, uh, if you would like to, 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 to the team, to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the, the participants here, 
if you would like to participate in this challenge, what would prevent you from doing that? What is what are the barriers, either knowledge or tools or uh, other aspects? We can also flip the question and say, uh, what would you need to actually be able to join and participate in the challenge? Yeah, I would say there, there are 22 participants online today. How many of them are planning on not submitting for the challenge? So if you're if you're not planning to submit, how, how many of there are there are you that, that might not be planning to submit? Do you have to provide the whole chat with GPT? That, that is our desire, yes. And um, so uh, our desire definitely is to be able to reproduce the interaction if that's possible to do. Um, is there any kind of support in the Slack? Yes. From Nelson, yes, there is a Slack channel directly related to this topic and we actively monitor it. So there are four people actively monitoring all the time and we will respond. Is there a criteria on the testing or verification of the generated design? And um, so last time around, we looked for the existence of verification and um, and that existence of verification uh, was, was assumed to be sufficient to uh, allow some level of verification to have happened. We did actually review many of the verification test cases ourselves. Uh, visually, we didn't rerun them. Um, we talked about modifying the criteria this time around to include verification coverage as one of the criteria for testing on the path to completion to try to understand how, how complete in verification these designs are. Uh, but what the criteria or final criteria are, are really going to be determined a little bit by how mature the design submissions are. Right? So if the design submission bar is still you know, at the uh, novelty level where we're trying new IPs, but we haven't yet gotten them to be uh, what I'll describe as uh, you know, commercially viable levels of blocks, and um, then we, we will moderate the bar appropriately. If the design submissions are very, very mature, and it's, it's possible that one or two of them will be, um, then we're probably going to have to uh, you know, look at some of the criteria to differentiate those blocks as we get there at the end. That was to Raju. I hope I answered the question. And um, chat is disabled. Okay, are you able to post a question for the I announcement? believe I believe it's because it's uh, uh, I believe it's because of the anonymous nature uh, it may actually prevent you if you if you're not signed in. I'm not sure. If you can see the questions if you can use Q and A instead of chat, that may be helpful. I sent the channel in, uh, link, and I think Andrea also sent it uh, over the chat, but I sent it as an answer to Nelson's question. Did we answer the, que answer the question, do we have to provide the whole chat with GPT? Yes, so ver verbally the answer was yes to, uh, to Michael, go ahead. Um, yes, we would like you to provide the whole chat if that's possible. And to, to be uh, uh, clear about where that ends up, yesterday, uh, not yesterday, last competition, uh, we had one submission that had uh, a tarball that they had to send us. It was uh, nearly 100,000 lines of chat. And actually, four of the judges reviewed large portions of the uh, large portions of the tarball to understand how they'd gotten to the design that they were trying to produce. So uh, we we really did look at that to try to understand how the design was done and make sure that it wasn't being uh, you know written by hand and then replacing uh, the work of the AI assistant. Uh, so we we really do and would like to see that submission. Yeah, and, and, and I'm flashing on this. Screen here, just an example again of the winner, number one winner in last, last challenge. You'll see that they divided the different tasks into files, and in every file, there is a sequence of um, user, and the assistant here is the chat GPT in this case or, uh, response. So 
if you think about it, this is the, the way you should be able to, someone else would be able to use and come up with a very close answer because it's not going to be verbatim the same, but these prompts, are, which is most of the value, is that how the prompt was written is important. So sharing it is a great thing and you can learn from that as well. And one's here. So I would say to William uh, Salcedo, um, and I'll come back to the anonymous attendee. William, the, the, there are many of us, I would say all of us make mistakes. And um, if you go back and look through the process that uh, Hammond followed, and his process included his mistakes in his iterations and actually talked about how many iterations it took for him to resolve each of the mistakes when he was using his chip chat engine. So he, in his logs, actually captures the issues that he uh, has found, uh, the problems that he created, the prompts that he entered to resolve those prompts and work forward. And the, the, the simplest method of passing the information out to the user is literally just to log everything that you did in chat and dump the window. That's the, the fastest way for people to be able to follow what happened and understand that the process that you followed is, is, uh, is real. And equ equivalently with the API, just dump the response logs and the, the, the prompts and responses. Okay, I hope that answers the question for William. And um, the uh, question from anonymous attendee, familiarity with the Caraval process. So uh, to anonymous attendee, we should set up a, uh, a webinar probably um, to introduce the videos and the documentation associated with getting through the Caraval process quickly. If you already have a design that you're trying to submit through the Caraval process, um, getting through that process, assuming that it's able to be compliant to the Caraval user project interface is very quick. And by very quick, I'll say that uh, you know my three minute video does the integration of a user design inside the Caraval user project wrapper Verilog in about 15 seconds by pasting the user project wrapper into the chat GPT window along with the original design. And the, the, the integration is literally that fast. And um, from a non verilog perspective, uh, looking at the rest of the features from the integration perspective, probably a few hours to go through that process if your design is small, probably a few days if your design is complex and there's a lot of simulation time or verification time associated with running it. So we, we can set up a webinar to go through the process and get you moving through, through uh, the Caraval integration process along with any of the other users who are stuck on that. We did that the last time around also. We started that process about two weeks before the final submission and we actually kept doing it until the final day. So very happy to do the same thing again. And I also provided the link on chat on, uh, on all those videos we have done on Caraval like how to get started and so on. So that link is on chat. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Art Scott, tool documentation enables zero shot tool usage with LLM. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Art, very Art, Art is giving us Thanks, another <clears throat> By the way, as you go, as we go through the next few weeks, waiting in, closer to the end of the competition, we have a weekly uh, session that we will have <clears throat> every week uh, to enable uh, live access where we can talk, you know, if there are any barriers. And as we get closer to the time of the submission, uh, if people have any issues with the, uh, the actual back end of the, the problem, which is the uh, uh, generating the, the actual design and GDS and submission, we will cover that as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, and next week we will have uh, um, uh, Dr. Hammond Pierce, the winner of the last um, uh, challenge, uh, present um, and speak in the webinar. Uh, it will be a different time uh, zone because he's in Australia now, and but the webinar will be recorded. So if you if you are in the to right the time zone that is within the Australian 24 uh, plus minus 12, then uh, you, you know you can join easier than the other. So uh, just FYI, so this is expect notification for these uh, uh, very soon. Yeah, this is quite short. And so we should set up the webinar date or proposed webinar date for the interaction with uh, uh, Caravel and helping users get through the Caravel submission process. 
Is there yep. anybody in the participants that's not planning to try to do a submission? If you're just curious, uh, ping us with a uh, uh, just curious on the Q&A, just so we understand that if there's a, a person who's just interested but not planning a submission. So Andy, shall I launch a poll question so that we can get the answer? I just created one. I can launch it. They only have to say yes or no. That would be fine. Although we just got two just curious, one just curious and one don't know on the uh, on the Q and A, which is a very good uh, uh, <laughs> quick quick answer. Okay, right yeah, it's perfect. Um, gives us an idea of uh, of where people have landed. And um, what of Brad? Um, Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know. Haven't seen him this time around yet. So I just launched the poll. Yep. Um, Bard is right. Thank you, Mitch Bard. Yeah, yeah, got it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about another user. Um, yes, any any AI art, um, and we're open to any uh, interactive, either API or website-based text prompt AI. Um, and the AI can be an AI that you develop yourself as long as you're capable of logging in text format the interactions with the AI. So we're assuming, first of all, that the AI is based on an LLM, and we're assuming that the AI is capable of providing input and output in a text format that's human readable. And if those are violated, we should have a conversation. If those are not violated, you're free to use it. Okay. Yeah, there's one, one important component. If you're using a, 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 your own AI with your own data and it's not public, Mm -hmm. That is, uh, uh, that would be considered an obstacle for someone else to be able to reproduce it. Yes, so, um, open open access or open source didn't need to be open source, but does need to be at least ac accessible with some reasonable. And so far, it's been very low amounts of cash. Yep. And um, to Alexander's Ladinkis, they're actually on the website today. Um, but we can get a link sent out or, or posted to the uh, generative AI challenge, the, the second generative AI challenge page with additional videos on it. And there is a suite of about 10 help videos that are also up online today. I think we have answered the Bard question and Alexander's question. Both of those are done. And um, to uh, Michael Agoyan and to Andrea Musa, the two guys who said uh, on the fence about possibly doing a submission, um, what, would, what would it take to get you from on the fence to uh, submitting? Uh, what, what, what would be uh, you know, the necessary help um, or what would be the, uh, the spur uh, towards the path of doing a submission? Mm. <clears throat> another me <laughs> another me. i was gonna say some people said the time yeah uh, I, the, I, understand, I understand that barrier that was a, that's a good I, one i i would say um, and it's, it's worth noting we had one person uh, last time around the winning submission and um, they started he was doing exams until five days before the competition ended and he started his work on the submission in the last five days did all of the work for the uh, design and all of the work for the submission um, with with five days of calendar time so if, if uh, you know if the bar is to, to produce something that's a winning level submission uh, you know, five days with uh, with direct contribution, and he had never used Caravel before. And um, if you if you are you know uh, looking to participate to understand what's possible with the tools, but not directly driving to win, and um, you know understand what's possible to do with AI, I would say you can get an AI submission and get it through the Caravel submission process with a block that's simpler or less novel than Hammond's in probably about two days of work. And so if, if all you're trying to do is learn how to use the tools and then drive through the Caravel uh, submission process, that, that is a much simpler process than, you know, trying to produce the best design in competition. Okay. So that'll One more aspect here about uh, another me. So yeah. I, I hope it's clear. Uh, if it's not, let's make it clear, is that teaming 
having a team to submit a design is is a valid submission uh, you know, as a team. And absolutely encouraged. Yeah, so yes. if, you guys, if you guys decide that there's a few people who'd like to work together to do a submission and, and, and are interested in doing that, feel feel free to engage uh, yourselves or others to go, do, go through that process. And uh, we, we've had multiple team submissions so far. Can people make multiple submissions? There's no barrier to multiple submissions. No, there's no no there's, issue with that. There's, there's no, nothing in our rule set prohibits them from submitting multiple times or submitting as multiple different uh, uh, teams. Maybe you could go ahead uh, help the uh, Andrea uh, if you have if you have more time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, but uh, no no issue with multiple submissions, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've got a group of people who are on the phone and who are, who are, uh, are on the uh, video call and are, are quite quiet. Uh, any of those interested in doing a submission uh, that uh, have any questions that we could address now that might help them get going? Okay. Okay, so it sounds like there, there are two processes that are worth introducing. Um, has everybody uh, has everybody who's on the call at least tried ChatGPT or the GPT-4 API? Has everybody tried it at some level? Or is it is it novel uh, e even to get to that step? Andrea is a yes. Is there anybody who hasn't tried it and is looking for just the basic introduction to what's required to be able to try it? Yes, and not really. Con I presume that's not really convinced. Is that what that means? Not not convinced you can do something useful with it, Michael. Is that the is that the point? I don't understand exactly what that point was. Maybe it's typing, but you know, could you? Yeah. Yeah, could you elaborate on you know uh, uh, the not really convinced with what what exactly? Not, not convinced by the answers of ChatGPT. Got it. Well, okay. I, I I will say to, I'll I'll go to Michael's question first and then come back to Mohammed's. And um, so uh, not convinced by the answers of ChatGPT. And um, I am uh, similarly not convinced by the answers of ChatGPT when I'm vague with my prompts. And uh, what I've what I've discovered is that ChatGPT. Uh, with GPT-4, which is now called, I think, ChatGPT+, and um, produces substantially better answers than GPT-3.5 at the prompt. And GPT-4 through the API is also uh, substantially better than the GPT-3.5, even the 3.5 Turbo. And um, so I, I will say that there's a, a very significant difference depending on which version of the uh, LLMs that you're using. And there's also a very significant difference, massive difference, depending on how much prompt engineering you do. So you can go from completely dysfunctional, useless answers to uh, answers that will produce tens of lines of very functional code from a few prompts, uh, just depending on how the prompt engineering is done. So you, you, the, the, the leap in uh, output quality varies drastically as you learn how to prompt successfully what the AI is doing. Um, and uh, it's it's worth watching that three minute video just as an introduction. It's also worth looking at some of the other work other people have done, uh, or maybe at some of the examples in the software space from GPT engineer to understand how people have done pre prompts and prompt engineering to be successful. And um, so that was really to Michael and um, to Mohammed. any preference for the implemented design and um, one that you feel that you have the capability to implement successfully. Mohammed. So I, I would say set the bar at something that you feel that you can you can steer successfully to fruition and fits inside uh, the Caravel implementation space. So you, you've got some basics, basic constraints. You've got the boundary, you've got the power supply, you've got the IO, you've got the clock speed, um, and, and you want to be able to do something that you can get done from a design and verification perspective in a reasonable period of time. So don't don't shoot for the moon. 
Um, although you're welcome to if, if, uh, if you think you have the capability to get that done in time. Um, but do shoot for something you can implement reasonably in a reasonable period of time. And um, I think I answered them okay. Um, I'm going to say so, I answered them okay. By the way, for Michelle's question uh, about the being convinced, I sent you the link to the okay. chats form again, just to be handy for convenience yeah. for, the, for the winner. Uh, you might want to, other than trying your own type of prompts, you can also try these prompts. Uh, and and feedback is 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 valid. So if you know, we're not saying it's the there's nothing wrong with this process. Actually, there we 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 want to uh, to, to to discover and see what are the capabilities and what are the gotchas uh, through uh, collaborative effort with the community. Yes, yeah, so our, our, our goal again was to get from uh, no work or virtually no work had been done on RTL through AI LLMs um, and there was no learning code base available or very little learning code base in the open source domain. Our goal is to try to get the community to use the tools enough for us to understand the best methods today and be able to propagate that learning across the community so that we are at least uh, on par with the, the best that's being done worldwide. That's, that's what we're trying to set out to do. Um, and, and so far, that's been extremely effective in, in getting a, a group of people who knew nothing about how to do this, myself included, up to a bar where we think we're, we're at least on parity of understanding, maybe not parity of execution yet, parity of understanding with some of the best people uh, who are doing this work in the world today. And we were able to get there in a period of a few months uh, by virtue of just the, the power of community. We would not have been able to achieve it without the community help. And that's what we're looking to extend is to take that capability and have everybody learn from each other's experience. And um, left there is uh, GPT-4 just works better. <laughs> Tools like Auto GPT, Baby AGI, or, or Langchain have too many issues right now. I, I, I agree. I will say that um, GPT engineer on top of GPT-4 is a path we're actively researching inside of uh, Ifablus Atheris. And we're, we're likely to take our version of uh, GPT engineer, which is currently a branch, but we're likely to put something out in the open source domain relatively soon um, as a step to try to uh, you know, just propagate the learning we have um, and, and say, you know, this is, this is what we've been able to do. Um, all we did was uh, take a normal verification flow um, or are doing, I should say, because we're still in progress and is taking a normal verification flow of, you know, define a block, implement a block, take the block definition, implement independent verification, run the verification step on the block using the independent verification test case, look for the bugs, and then fix the bugs. We built that, that process on top of the chat GPT, or I should say the GPT-4 interface. And so that, that's, that's what our current version of GPT engineer looks like internally. Um, and we're working to try to get that to the point where it's you know, useful enough to be interesting for the open source community at large to advance on. And right now it's still got some issues. And as soon as we get those very basic issues worked through, uh, we'll put that out in the open source domain for other people to work on or play with. Other questions from anybody? Looks like we don't. Yep. So, um, if, if there are no other questions, don't have any more questions. If there are uh, no other questions, uh, we, I can propose to close the session. Uh, I strongly recommend to, to feel free to talk about the on the, uh, the Slack channel, join it, uh, ask questions, or uh, provide any input. That would be great. And uh, and uh, we look forward to your work and also uh, seeing you again in the next webinar uh, next week. Can everybody see the Slack? And uh, just to confirm. Yeah, it's up, I can see it on the chat. 
Can can one of the uh, participants confirm that you can see the Slack link, guys, that got posted on the chat by uh, Andrea? Thank you, Bathurst. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. okay. So the, if the links are up there and you've got, got them, the next thing is for us to set up a session to try to help people get through Caraval. Thank you very much. And uh, looking forward to seeing the submissions and we will get some version of GPT engineer out as fast as we can. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh...